Hello and welcome to part one of my campaign speedrun miniseries. To start off, let me talk about what I mean by speedrun. I'm not going to be minimizing the amount of played time, but the number of launches. I'm going to be starting with a normal difficulty campaign on default settings, and then try to unlock the entirety of the tech tree and as few launches as possible. My goal with the first launch will be to orbit Kerbin. To make this possible, I'm going to make use of the bailout strategy at the administration building to give me a little bit more money and use that to upgrade the launch pad so I can have more launch mass. The starting tech means that the only rocket part available to me is the flea engine, the least powerful of the SRBs. After slapping on four goo containers and a parachute, I filled out the rest of the available 30 part count with flea engines. One of the obvious problems here is that I do not have any decouplers which would seem to prevent me from using any stage design. However, I can achieve staging by mounting the flea engine's inline and using the first bit of fuel on the upper stages to burn off the lower stage. In total, I have 12 stages of SRB, 11 of which will get me to suborbital trajectory. The most difficult bit of piloting was during the early ascent where some flex in design resulted in torque, which made it absolutely impossible to keep the craft on a straight heading. Because SRBs can't be throttled down or off and on, it's really important that I get my gravity turn right so my apoapsis, after burning the first 11 stages, is in space, but not too far into space. Now that we have burned the first 11 stages and are coasting to space, let's talk a little bit about the research here. The metric for a successful first mission is just about entirely the amount of research points that it returns. This will determine the parts that I have to work with during the second launch of this campaign, which will happen in the second video. As we reach our apoapsis, I burn the twelfth and final stage, injecting us into a full orbit and giving us an apoapsis high enough that we can access the high in space research points. A lot of the potential research points from low carbon orbit comes from EVA reports. However, EVA during flight is not unlocked at the beginning of a campaign. To get that unlocked, we need an upgraded astronaut center. Fortunately, we've earned enough credits from milestones during the ascent that we have enough credits to upgrade the astronaut center. And thanks to Kerbal Ingenuity, this somehow means that we're now able to go on EVA on missions that have already launched. Our fearless scientist Bob Kerman now picks up EVA reports over as many biomes as possible. It's now time to inject back into a suborbital trajectory for landing and because we've used all of our stages of SRB, it would in fact help if Bob got out and pushed. While arrow breaking down into a landing approach, I did have enough electrical charge left in the crew module that I was able to aim my descent and try to land at least somewhat close to the KSC. With this landing, I'm going to close out part one in this series to see how much research we've returned and what I'm going to be able to build for launch two in this campaign. Stay tuned for part two, and thank you very much for watching.